Okay, so in this server workstation environment, an example of a standalone is that one antivirus software running on this computer is totally responsible for going out to the antivirus update server, pulling the updates back down through the firewall to update itself. And let's say it uses probably one megabit of bandwidth, just the assumption, times if we have a standalone solution for every single computer on campus, 700. And they all decide to go out when they first get turned on in the morning at 8 a.m. <laughs> now we have 700 megabytes of bandwidth wanting to be used up on our internet connection until they're all done downloading whatever they need to download for updates. Anybody see an issue or problem? Yeah. Our bottleneck is our internet connection. It is usually the slowest connection point between an internet server and a host on our network. The connection here between this PC and this server is probably 1,000 megabits per second or one gigabit per second, correct? Typical LAN today. The internet connection here is approximately 50 megabits per second, which is pretty darn good. Okay? So that's the downfall with the standalone solution. Another downfall is, what if this computer doesn't get turned on for a week or two weeks? It's two weeks behind on its updates now, right? Mm -hmm. And what if someone turns it on and immediately sticks in a flash drive that has a Trojan on it or some sort of worm that self-propagates itself? Now what do we have? Pandemic. Yeah, a <laughs> pandemic. I don't know, what's the definition of the pandemic? But yeah, we have a problem. Now we have an infected computer because it doesn't have the latest updates. So we now change over to a managed solution. Here's the antivirus manager. Its responsibility, this is a special software we install on the server. Its responsibility is to not only go out and get updates, that one computer on our entire network goes out and gets updates from the server, from the antivirus update server, but it also reports and audits who in its list of clients that it manages has been updated and who hasn't. So end of the week, I print a report on Friday, let's make my rounds. Oh, I have six computers down in the egg shop that haven't been updated. My policy states that computers are not allowed to be more than three days behind update schedule. Therefore, I will now send a tech down to the egg building to turn these on and make sure that they get updated for the antivirus server. So it gives me some checks and balances. It gives me an audit trail to identify who hasn't been updated. Or even better, I can use my remote management software to turn these on remotely, and then they'll instantly get updates. And then I'll have them turn off. Okay. Are you guys starting to see this? Which makes this a lot easier to manage 700 computers and the possible possibility of an antivirus, or sorry, a virus or a worm being spread throughout all these computers. You think maintaining your own one or two computers is difficult to keep software updates and antivirus updates. Imagine 700 of them being responsible for it, or if not more, in an environment where people carry these things around. Well, USB flash drives, okay, which is a whole other issue. And people who all constantly check their emails and go, oh, an old friend of mine sent me a news article and says, must read. Hmm, I should click that link in that email. All right? And then we get infected with a what, Wes? <laughs> a little FBI warning saying that you've downloaded illegal software. A little some ransomware, right? Yeah. 
I'm sure it wasn't you. It was probably somebody from the previous semester. It just actually finally activated when we turned the uh, windows back on. <laughs> okay. So any questions about managed or standalone solutions? This concept also gets applied to software updates. Microsoft updates their operating system, right? Once at the second Tuesday of every month. Do you want all 700 computers going out and downloading that 200 <laughs> megabit update file? No. no, we do not. It works fine on my one or two computers at home, but in a business with 700 or 1,000 computers, not a good idea. You'll have a lot of people upset that you can't get out to the internet to do whatever business they need to do. So they have a special Windows update server. That, will, that one server will then go out, grab updates from Microsoft, bring them back down, and then you as an administrator can check off which update packages you want to apply. Why do we not want to install all updates just like that? What are some reasons why we'd one want to install an update? Possibly timing. Maybe it's going to change the program and it works just fine the way it is, but when they change it, it's not going to work for you anymore. Exactly. That is a very, very big key and a very major pain in the ass for a lot of IT administrators because we have third party software installed on 600 of the computers in our customer service department that are running a specialized third-party software to do one function that is required for them to take calls from customers. And a Microsoft security update or a patch or an update to a dynamic link library or DLL will make that piece of software stop working. Guess what? We now have 600 customer service agents who can't answer the phone. Is that, yeah, that's not good. You have a lot of upset customers now, right? Yeah, and your business is gonna go down the tubes for that duration. So that's why we tell all of these managed clients to not go get updates on their own. We wanna control that because we wanna have a test computer out here that we can install updates and go, Everything tested okay, we clicked and opened up every program, we ran a report or did whatever we do, and everything looks fine. Great, now let's release it tonight, and everybody else should have that update by tomorrow morning. That's the proper procedure to do it. Not willy-nilly go, yay, that's oh, updates, great, awesome, Microsoft, thank you, let's install those, <coughs> right? So it, 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 you have to make sure that the updates you're installing, even on your server, are not going to conflict with and change your, your software that you're running on. That's why test environments are nice, because you can test the software. So you should have an exact copy of a typical workstation in your environment that you can install. Even antivirus engines might change a shared dynamic link library that can stop another function of the, the workstation from working. There's some problems there. In your opinion, what's better, a service-based managed or a cloud-based? Uh, well, a server-based management, because a, a cloud-based, you still are using up your bandwidth here, mm -hmm. right? But it, it, as far as antivirus or, or software updates, yeah, like a, yeah if it's cloud-based, you still go back to the same concept where you, you're using this small amount of bandwidth here. Your bottleneck is getting used up by all of your clients going up to the Internet. So a, a local server is the key here. Um, there's even, you can probably even get a, an appliance. So what's an appliance in your kitchen? Toaster. A toaster, what does it do? It only, toast. it only makes it toast, toast. Mm -hmm. period, end of story. It doesn't warm up your food. It doesn't blend up your, your fruits and vegetables or whatever you need to blend or ice. It only makes toast. It's an appliance that does that one thing. So a network appliance is a server or a piece of equipment that I plug into my network and it does just that one thing. Which makes it easier to administer because it just does that one thing. I don't need to do anything else with it. All it does is those software updates or it does antivirus updates. And it's managed by an outside cloud service or an outside management company. 
they take care of it. So I plug it in my network and I trust that the company I bought it from, they're gonna remote in and manage that one network appliance, that's all they have access to, and they're gonna make sure it's updated and it's doing its job and it's functioning properly. And I don't have to worry about it. It then communicates to all my clients and updates whatever they need to do here. So that would be more of like a outsourced cloud-based service. But I still need that physical box here so I have that bandwidth to my 700 clients or 500 or even 100. It makes a difference. Any other questions?